So we know now that we can have some pointer in the kernel pointing into New Zealand, but right now we're using the debugger to win the race. And that's how we know when it's happened because we are analyzing the registers, states or whatever. But the goal is to start to eliminate the need for the debugger to help us winning the race. So one of the main things is that how do we detect whether or not we actually won the race, but from New Zealand, so that we can potentially exploit it in some sort of way that is useful? How do we avoid the code crashing? So obviously we don't want to use a bunch of A's when we replace the K and spin chunk. And while we are still using the debugger, it would be nice if we could avoid breakpoints that slow down debugging. And so it would be nice if we could figure out a way to just kick in the debugger as soon as we have successfully won the race condition so that we don't have to use the bang patch command or do stepping or whatever and only debug the state after the race is won. That would be really useful. So these are the type of things that as we get ideas about the code and how we want to win the race and post-race win stuff, we think about these and make little recipe list of what we want to solve. In this video, we're going to look at things we can do after we win the race condition. We're going to see how we can detect that we win the race, but from New Zealand, since the kernel is going to touch our New Zealand enlistments, we're going to see what we need to set in our fake enlistments in order to avoid a crash in the kernel. And we're going to see how we can make sure that the debugger kicks in right after we win the race. Okay, let's get started. So we know there is no SMAP on Windows 10 1809. At the time of recording this, there is no SMAP at all on any Windows version. So we know that we can give a userland pointer to the kernel and that the kernel will happily use the userland pointer without causing any issue. And so basically what we can do is we can just create a fake k in New Zealand and provide it to the kernel. So the strategy is we replace the freed key enlistment in the kernel with name pipe data. And instead of providing a bunch of A's, we just provide a next same RM fling pointer to a userland address that is holding a key enlistment structure that we can populate with any contents since it is in userland. And so the main loop of the variable function has functionality that can leak us information about whether or not we won the race. And it's related to the fact that the loop tries to be efficient in the case where it has to pass from the enlistment head a second time. And the efficiency is that when it detects a notifiable K enlistment, it will unset the notifiable flag so that it never tries to notify that again. So if we provide a pointer to a username k enlistment. We control everything in the k enlistment. So initially, we can set the k enlistment notifiable flag. And when the kernel starts to process our fake k enlistment after we win the race condition, it will unset that flag. And we will never unset that flag ourselves from username. And no other process is accessing our memory. So we can basically just try to trigger the bug and then test this notifiable flag from username. And if that flag is unset, it means that we managed to win the race condition and the kernel is now interacting with our username memory. And so I have a small animation to explain this. And so this is the main loop of the variable function. And so we assume the recovery thread is blocked here and we want the race condition from another thread. And so because we want the race condition, we're able to control the next same RM fling pointer. And so it fetches our fake Kenisman address from New Zealand and save it into P enlistment shifted. And then it restarts looping. And so obviously because K enlistment shifted points to userland, it means that it doesn't point to the K enlistment head, so it won't exit the loop and it will do another iteration. A funny thing is we could actually make it spin forever here, but it's not that interesting because it won't give us any control. And so we can make sure the K enlistment finalized flag is not set, so it enters the else condition instead. 
and we can see that if we actually set the notifiable flag it will go inside another if condition and at the end of this if condition it will actually unset this flag and so because it is our fake kernismen from username we are able to detect it since we can check the memory from username and so basically this is what it looks like if you're trying to visualize the memory you've got the chain of enlistment is pointing to some chunk that is use after freed and this use after freed chunk points to a fake userland enlistment with the notifiable flag set and this flag gets unset by the kernel after we win the race condition and so this is all well and good but we're still stuck in this loop that's going to process our fake userland kernelismant and it's going to try to do stuff on it so when it's going to try to fetch the flame pointer from that user and enlistment and keep going through the loop because if we remember it's bounded by pointing at the enlistment head which is never going to do now because the loop is going to be stuck inside of userlan due to us providing user and enlistment so we need a way to basically control the loop a little bit more and detect that we won the race and start doing stuff and so basically the trick is just introduce a fling pointer inside of the user and enlistment to point to itself and that will basically just cause the thread in the kernel to infinite loop but it will infinite loop in a way that we now control everything and we can break it out of the infinite loop later from userman by just changing the next same rm fling pointer to point somewhere else in userman again and so this technique we came up with we've just referred to as a trap enlistment because we are basically trapping the kernel in userman and so yeah i mentioned that once this state happens not only can we detect it from userland but we also want to be able to ideally trigger the debugger to kick in as soon as the race is won so we can analyze how it's processing the userland kernelismant and we don't want to just have a breakpoint at the commonly executed part of the main loop because as i explained we are introducing like hex 5000 enlistments that the kernel is going to be parsing while this is happening and so you don't want to have a breakpoint triggering for every iteration and so we came up with a little trick which is that we don't use superior enlistments in a normal scenario to trigger the bug and so there is this code in the loop that only gets called if an enlistment happened to be superior as you can see due to the is superior variable being set it will go into that specific if condition and so when you are normally looping through and winning the race you're never going to hit this code but because we control all of the fields in our fake user and enlistment we can also just set the flags to say that it's superior and then it will enter this code that is highlighted in yellow and so before we trigger the bug at all we can go in win bag and set a breakpoint on this code and then as soon as the race condition hits it processes the user and enlistment and tests the superior flag and so the debugger kicks in and then from that point we can start debugging more interesting details of what it's doing with the user and enlistment so yeah basically the trick is to set the key enlistment superior flag and then also part of that as you can see a little bit above the yellow part it is basically pulling out a pointer to a k transaction and that k transaction is from userlan and it's testing the state field of that k transaction so it means that we have to create a fake k transaction structure in userlan set a state variable for it and then point our fake k enlistment transaction pointer to that fake k transaction and that's basically what it looks like so this enlistment that allows us to kick in, in the debugger we call it a debug enlistment technically the debug enlistment can also be a trap enlistment at the same time but you could point its next same rm fling pointer to a trap enlistment and just have the kernel pa parse the debug enlistment and then jump at the next phase of the loop to the trap enlistment this slide is just to give you ideas of stuff to think about and so something to just think about in general is that because the kernel is just looping over this next same rm fling pointer in the trap enlistment and it's gonna do that 
indefinitely. It gives us the opportunity to do things. And so basically, any time we want to fork the kernel to do something useful for us in the loop, we can just modify that fling pointer to something else. And so this is demonstrated in this diagram at the three to n phases where there is a primitive. The idea is you trap the kernel using this trap enlistment. You detect, you won the race, and then you inject new kernelismant over time that force the loop to do certain things. And every time you need to measure what happened or know whether or not the kernel has completed something that you want the kernel to be doing with this newly injected kernelismant, you just point this new set of inserted kernelismant to a new trap enlistment and wait for that trap enlistment notifiable flag to be unset. So you basically just have this little new state machine that you can play with. 